Hi, we're going to be looking at steam power cycles, more specifically, simple Rankin reheat cycles. The problem statement we're given here is to consider a simple Rankin cycle with two reheat processes. They tell us steam enters the turbine at a temperature of 400 degrees C and a pressure of 3 megapascals and leaves at a pressure of 10 kPa. A first reheat process is performed at 1200 kPa and brings the steam to a temperature of 400 degrees C. Then, a second reheat process is performed at 800 kPa and brings the steam also to a temperature of 400 degrees C. They ask us to sketch the TS diagram and determine the thermal efficiency of the cycle. So, if we draw this cycle out, we start with a pump. We go to a first boiler through our first turbine, through a second boiler. This is our first reheat process. We go through a second turbine, and then through a third boiler. And this is our second reheat process. And finally, through a third turbine, into our condenser, and back to our pump. So what we can do is we can call this here point 1, point 2, point 3, point 4, point 5, point 6, point 7, point 8, and then back to point 1. And we're flowing in this direction. Let's look at what's given. We're told that the steam enters the turbine at 400 degrees C and that the pressure is 3 megapascals. So we can say that T3 is equal to 400 degrees C and P3 is equal to 3 MPa. We also know that from 2 to 3 through the boiler, pressure remains constant. So we can say that P2 is equal to P3. We're then told that it leaves our turbine at 10 kPa. What that means is that the pressure in the condenser, pressure at 1 and pressure at 8, is equal to 10 kPa. So P1 is equal to P8 is equal to 10 kPa. We're told our first reheat process occurs at 1200 kPa. So that means from 4 to 5 through boiler 2, our first reheat process, we're at 1200 kPa. So we can say P4 is equal to P5 is equal to 1200 kPa. And we're told that it brings the temperature back up to 400 degrees C. So T5 is equal to 400 degrees C. We're then told that our second reheat process occurs at 800 kPa. That means the pressure at 6, which is equal to the pressure at 7, through our third boiler, or our second reheat process, is 800 kPa. So P6 is equal to P7 is equal to 800 kPa. And we're told that this second reheat process brings the temperature back up to 400 degrees C. So T7 is equal to 400 degrees C. We're asked to find the thermal efficiency of this system. We can write that the thermal efficiency is equal to the work net divided by Q in. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to say that the work of the pump is approximately equal to zero. So we're going to neglect it. We can then write that the thermal efficiency is equal to the work of turbine 1 plus the work of turbine 2 plus the work of turbine 3 divided by Q in or the heat in from our first boiler plus Q in 2, which is the heat addition from our first reheat process or our second boiler, plus Q in 3, which is the heat addition from our second reheat process or our third boiler. We can rewrite this as the enthalpy at state 3 minus the enthalpy at state 4 plus the enthalpy at state 5 minus the enthalpy at state 6 plus the enthalpy at state 7 minus the enthalpy at state 8. This is the work of turbine 1 plus the work of turbine 2 plus the work of turbine 3 divided by the enthalpy at state 3 minus the enthalpy at state 2. This is our first boiler plus the enthalpy at 
state 5 minus the enthalpy at state 4 plus the enthalpy at state 7 minus the enthalpy at state 6. This is our third boiler. So our first boiler, our first reheat process, our second reheat process. Now that we know what we need, we can start solving for the enthalpies at the different states of our process. So because we said that the work of the pump was equal to zero, we can say that the work of the pump is equal to the enthalpy at 2 minus the enthalpy at 1, and we said it was equal to zero. Therefore, the enthalpy at 2 is equal to the enthalpy at 1. And we assume that before our pump, we have 100% saturated fluid. So we can say that this is equal to 191.83 kilojoules per kilogram. And this is equal to the enthalpy of 100% fluid, or quality equal to zero, and pressure equal to 10 kPa. Then, the enthalpy at state 3, we can say, is equal to 3,230.82 kilojoules per kilogram. And this is equal to the enthalpy at 3 megapascals and 400 degrees C from your superheated vapor tables. We can then also say that the entropy at 4 is equal to the entropy at 3. And we find that this is equal to 6.9212 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. And this is the entropy at 3 megapascals and 400 degrees C from your superheated vapor tables. With this, we can find the entropy, or sorry, the enthalpy at state 4 to be equal to 2,985.3 kilojoules per kilogram, and this is equal to the enthalpy at 6.9212 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin, and a pressure of 1,200 kPa. We know that at state 5, right after our first reheat process, we have a pressure of 1,200 kPa and temperature of 400 degrees C. So we can say that the enthalpy at 5 is equal to 3,260.7 kilojoules per kilogram, which is equal to the enthalpy at 1,200 kPa and 400 degrees C from our superheated vapor tables. We're also going to say that the entropy at 5 is equal to the entropy at 6 is equal to 7.3774 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. And this is equal to the entropy at 1,200 kPa and 400 degrees C. With this information, we can find that the enthalpy at 6 is equal to 2,811.2 kilojoules per kilogram which is equal to the enthalpy at an entropy of 7.3774 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin and 800 kPa. Now, we know that after our second reheat process, we have a temperature of 400 degrees C and a pressure of 800 kPa. So we can find that the enthalpy at state 7 is equal to 3,000 276.5 kilojoules per kilogram, and this is equal to the enthalpy at 800 kPa and 400 degrees C from your superheated vapor tables. We can now solve for the last part we need, which is the enthalpy at state 8. So we know that from 7 to 8 through our turbine, entropy is constant, so the entropy at 7 is equal to the entropy at 8 is equal to 7.5716 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin, and this is equal to the entropy at 800 kPa and 400 degrees C. With this information, we go to our saturated mixture tables at 10 kPa, and we find out that the entropy at 8 
is greater than the entropy of 100% fluid, but it's smaller than the entropy of 100% gas at 10 kPa. That means that at state 8, we have some sort of mixture of fluid and gas, so a saturated mixture. We can find that the quality at 8 is going to be equal to the entropy at 8 minus the entropy of 100% fluid divided by the entropy or the difference in entropy of 100% fluid minus 100% gas. This gives us 7.5716 minus 0 0.6493 divided by 7.5009. And this gives us a quality of 0 0.923. With this information, we can find that the enthalpy at 8 is equal to the quality at 8 times the difference in enthalpy of 100% fluid minus 100% gas plus the enthalpy of 100% fluid. This gives us 0 0.923 times 2,392.8 plus 191.8. 83, and we find that the enthalpy at state 8 is 2,400.06 kilojoules per kilogram. Now that we have all the information we need, we're ready to solve for the thermal efficiency of our system. We said that the thermal efficiency of the system was equal to the work of turbine 1 plus the work of turbine 2 plus the work of turbine 3 divided by Q in 1 plus Q in 2, this was our first reheat process, plus Q in 3, our second reheat process. Now, remember we said that we were neglecting the work of the pump. This gives us H3 minus H4 plus H5 minus H6 plus H7 minus H8. So work of turbine 1, work of turbine 2, work of turbine 3 divided by H3 minus H2 plus H5 minus H4 plus H7 minus H6. So the heat input from our boiler, our first reheat process, our second reheat process, this gives us 245.52 379.5 plus 876.44 divided by 3038.99 plus 275.4 plus 465.3. And finally, if we do all of our additions and our division, we get this to be equal to 0 0.397 or 39.7%. Or the last part of our problem asks us to draw the TS diagram. I went ahead and drew our different pressure lines. So this is our 10 kPa, our 800 kPa, our 1200 kPa, and our 3,000 kPa, or 3 megapascals. So what we said is we were starting at 0.1 over here, and we were going up to our highest pressure, to 0.2. Then we were heating up in our first boiler to 0.3. We then have some work being done by a turbine over here to 0.4. We then reheat here to 0.5. We then have more work done in another turbine to 0.6. We then reheat again to 0.7. And then finally, come all the way down over here to 0.8. Now, the work through our turbines we said was isentropic. And then we come back to 0.1 over here. And we're flowing in this direction. 